To endure sufferings and death with our Lord Jesus Christ before we enter with him into eternal glory. Grant us grace at all times to subject ourselves to thy holy will and to continue steadfast in the truth, faith unto the end of our lives, and at all times to find peace and joy in the blessed hope of the resurrection of the dead, 
and of the glory of the world to come. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with, his, with him also freely give us all things who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness a pearl or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, men. Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away, and he who sat upon the throne, said, Behold, I will make all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the fountain of the water of life without payment. He who conquers shall have this heritage. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Revelations 21 and 3 through 7.
Listen, don't call the roll until I get there. How many don't want him to call the roll until you get there? Say it, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise his mighty name. What a wonderful mighty God we serve. Praise God. Praise our Lord. Hallelujah. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Give God some praise for the If God's been good to you, stand up and give him some praise. Clap your hand. If you don't want to stand up, clap your hand. Give him the highest praise, which is hallelujah. 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 What a mighty, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. We are gathered here today for the celebration of the life of Denise Brown Fitch, better known as Niecy. Praise God, we call her niece. Praise the Lord. And niece, as I say niece, because we grew up together as sisters. I didn't have a sister, she didn't have a sister. And a grandmother raised her, well, we lived next door to each other, so my grandmother watched over all of us, praise God. And uh, niece was a very vibrant person. She was a very happy, lively person. Every time you saw Denise, she had a smile. She wasn't a sad person. And I know if she was here today, she would still be smiling. So we, this is not a place to be moaning today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But this is a place where we come to give her legacy and her name some honor today. Because we know she's already made that decision. And we can't say where or when. But we believe, praise God, I, I talked to her about two weeks before she passed. And we talked, and she thought she was in Elizabethtown Hospital, and she wanted Wenda and I to come and get her. And I said, no, you're not in Elizabethtown. And we began to talk, and I said, Denise, are you praying? She said, yes, I'm praying. And so that's the hope that I have, that she prayed until the end, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what we're going to do here today, we're going to follow the program as outlined. And right now, we'll have an Old Testament reading. Praise the Lord. And it flipped right open. Ephesians chapter 3, the Old Testament scripture, and it reads as follows. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, and a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to moan, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away. Praise the Lord. I have read the first six verses of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. May the Lord add a blessing to his red word. So right now, we'll have our Old Testament scripture for Pastor Lewell Campbell, followed by a musical selection. And after that, we have the prayer of comfort by Pastor Campbell. Reading from First John, I believe it's the third chapter of the New Testament. The third chapter and the first verse. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. 
Therefore, the world knows us not, because it knew him not. Praise the Lord. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Praise the Lord. May the Lord be a blessing to his red word.
every day. That's what we want to do is send our timber up, praise God, because one day we want to be rewarded, praise God, for the work that we have done. Right now we have opening prayer by our pastor, Pastor Lou L. Campbell. Everybody stand and set the family, and every head, be, every hand be lifted, and every head bow. Father God, I have a horse kind of a high. God is blessing. God is blessing. Thank you, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you right now, Lord, with a bowed head and a humble heart, believe in you, Lord God, for all things. And, Lord, I pray that you would have mercy on the family of my yay. Move in a mighty way, Lord. Lift the burdens of my yay in the name of Jesus. And, Lord God, we will praise you. Lord, we will glorify your name. Lord, we know that it's happened been easy, Lord, yay. But we know that you are the only one that can lift the burdens. God, have mercy upon them in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, bless around in the, in, in the, in the communities. And everywhere, Lord, every sick patient, everyone that's in the hospitals right now, Lord, they need you, Jesus. Heal and deliver, dear God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we'll praise you. We'll magnify your name. You'll be so merciful, as always, to help, Lord, help in a mighty way. And Lord, bless this service on today. Lord, help us to have a homegoing service on our high day in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, you never make any mistakes, Salamahayeh, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, you always lift the burden, Salamahayeh, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, bless. Bless and we shall be blessed. Keep us all and we shall be kept. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to have a good time today. We come to celebrate a home going. We want everybody to just get in and join and let's have a good time. We want God to fix our situation and he will do it. 
it. When he fix it, it will be a job well done. He's the only one that can fix it. He's the only one that can solve your problems, heal your body, make ways out of no ways. What a mighty God we serve. Praise God. You know, I thank God today. Praise the Lord. I praise God today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible actually says that we're supposed to cry at the coming in and rejoice at the going out. Praise God. So that's what we are doing today, praise God. Not only every day, but loosen up, praise God, because this is a home-going celebration. And at a celebration, praise God, it's a rejoicing time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So right now, we will have a selection of remarks from family and friends, and we're going to ask you to limit it to two minutes. Anybody have anything they'd like to say? I'll give a little tribute to, feel free to come forward at this time, and it will be followed by acknowledgments and obituary in that order. members of True Vine Holiness Church. It is a pleasure, an absolute pleasure for me to have this opportunity to have a moment of reflection for my dear friend and classmate. Actually, like Sister Reverend Joanne said, we were more like sisters than, than classmates because our relationship uh, runs 54 years. And there's one memory, and there are plenty, plenty of memories I could share, but there's only one that I'm going to take the time to share with you at this time. I remember back in the early 70s, um, her father, EJ, and her mom, Rosetta, would come 
down to visit her grandfather, Mr. Eugene Brown. And they were from Council, North Carolina. And, um, and I was raised in Council. And so when EJ and Rosetta would come for a visit, Denise would come with them down to Council. And, uh, and she would, uh, EJ would let her have borrow his car. And so Denise would call me, and she said, girl, I'm coming to get you. Uh, get ready. I said, okay. So we would get in that Buick Electra 225. Now, some of you may not remember that car. But we would, that was in the early 70s, remind you. Denise would drive, and I would ride. And neither one of us had a driver's license. <laughs> but we were happy, and you couldn't tell us nothing because we was in that Dukes in the quarter. You hear me? So I'm going to miss my friend Denise, and that's just one memory that I'm going to share at this time. I want you to know Michael, um, um, little George, just know that we are praying for you and the rest of the family, the Campbell family, um, the Brown family, which I consider my family, the Peterson family. Um, just know that you're going to be in my prayers. And I'm going to miss you, Denise. I'm going to miss you. Love you guys. Thank you very much. morning church I guess I wasn't going to get up and say anything but but she said keep it two minutes it's kind of hard to do because uh, first I want to give uh, honor to God pastors visiting friends family uh, <clears throat> I guess uh, I can say that I knew niece better than anybody <laughs> Because we were raised up together. And uh, Jeffine, all of us, came all of us together. And uh, we took you back to 75. But I could take you back to, uh, if you look in that book, you'll see a small picture of uh, Denise's uh, face there when she was a little girl. That's when we were coming up making mud pies. We would take, like, uh, the acorns and hickories. And, well, I know kids in here don't know about that right now. But... Uh, we would do that type of stuff, get cardboard boxes, and then I would get the biggest one because I wanted to be the mayor or the president, so i get the biggest box, climbing trees, all that type of stuff. So uh, that was the era, just taking you way back, that uh, we came up in. And then uh, as time progressed, uh, niece and I uh, departed from each other. She went to New York, and then I, w I, I went to New York, but I went in the, went in the Army uh, later. And uh, we got back together years later, and uh, Denise said, uh, <coughs> I want to invite you over for Thanksgiving. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, I never know Denise to cook. So I said, well, um, uh, yeah, okay, I'll come. And then uh, others of mine told me, well, you were in the Army, and you done ate all types of things, so you can't, you, know, you shouldn't mess with your dietary habits. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to come over, and I tell you, those were the most memorable times that I can recall because Denise perfected cooking collard greens and fried chicken. And, and any time you talk to her, she would say, hey, I'm, I'm putting on a pot of collard greens. i say, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah. And um, but you, I'm going to try to cut it short because I can go on and on. But if you think about it, we all got to come through times, trials, and tribulations, and you're going to come to a crossroad in your life where you're going to go, you're going to go through the same situations, maybe not like hers, but God always have a plan. He always lay out a plan for everybody, and we think about it. She went through a processing stage, 
It's like getting a job. You know how you process out of a job and you go on to something else in your future. Well, that's what she's, she did. She went through a processing stage, and we don't understand it, but we say, well, niece went through uh, a lot of sufferings and pain, but that is not the case all the time that God had for you. He wanted to have a reconciliation time with niece, so she would have a time to say, Lord, I want you to save my soul. I want to be in your number when the time come. And he gave her that chance. But we don't understand that all the time. We think that a person is going through a lot of suffering, pain, and stuff like that. But we all, one day, are going to travel the same road. But it may not be like the road that she traveled, but we will. And some people don't get that opportunity because they are killed instantly or some tragedy happened in their life, and they don't, they don't get that opportunity. So I just wanted to... Uh, I'm going to cut it short. I ask all of you that know the uh, words of prayer to pray for the family, uh, Mr. Finch, brothers and sisters, and uh, we want to let Niece know that we love her and we were going to miss her. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah, God. To the pastor of this church, Pastor Luella. And all gathering saints. Um, I'm niece's aunt, twin. And I was honored and I had the privilege to treat niece like my own daughter. I'm not going to be long, but I'd just like to share with you that Nisi imparted something into me that I will take to heaven when I go. She told me, she stayed with me, stayed with me uh, in November, Thanksgiving, and, and almost to Christmas. And she said, I got to go home. She said, I know you said you're going to give me a plant to take home. She said, but Michael coming to get me. She said, and Brother Uncle, and I enjoy being here Thanksgiving. She said, but I'm going home for Christmas. So Michael came and got her, and they went home for Christmas with their fun setter. But I would just like to say that um, we all have a ministry in, a, in, our, in, our, in ourselves, and um, some more than others. And I thank God that even though sometimes we may be unable in some things that we can't do, but there's always something we can do to help somebody. Amen. And I was listening to that person talking about, um, you know, she said peace now. There's you know, no more crying, no more, no more dying for her. And uh, I just think about how she, um, the week before she died, I was going south. And I went by the hospital and I saw Lucy. And I called her, I said, Lucy, and I said, uh, I've been trying to I've been trying to reach you right here the nurse so they get you on the coming. I said, we're gonna have a party. She said, oh man, what kind of party we're gonna have? I said, we're gonna have a hat party. So we had a beautiful time in the Lord. Um, we tried on hats, we tried on earrings, and she smiled, and she was just so, so happy. I said, but listen, I'm gonna go away. She didn't know. I was going away to visit someone she, she really loved. And I said, I come back, I go, surprise for you. I said, say, she wants you to go. She said, when I love the Lord, you know I love the Lord, she said. And uh, she said, I'll be here when you get back. When I got back, Jesus was gone. But I'm glad that we got a chance to have that hat party. And she was so happy. She put on earrings, and she, she was just smiling. She was just so happy. So I know she meant to a lot. So I just like to say that. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. Soon I will be done with these 
Praise the Lord. Right now we have our acknowledgments by Sister Trista Bethay.
Good morning. We acknowledge with sincere appreciation all who participated in the homegoing celebration of our dear loved one, Denise Brown Fitch. We thank each of you for your many prayers, calls, cards, food, and all other acts of kindness extended to us during our time of bereavement. Most of all, we thank God for our loved one, Denise and the wonderful years that we shared with her, the Fitch and Brown family. May 21st, 2022. To the family of Miss Denise Fitch, on behalf of New Beginnings Holiness Church, please accept our heartfelt sympathy. It is our prayer that the loving touch of Jesus Christ soften the sadness that you feel day by day. We hope that the love and the prayers of friends and family see you through this time of sorrow. Matthew chapter 5, verse 4 reads, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. May the presence of Christ strengthen and keep you. Let the Holy Ghost, who is the source of all consolation, be a comfort to you in your time of loss. As we go down in prayer, we will continue to call your family out to God, that he will continue to console and comfort you in the days ahead. With love and compassion, Pastor Leona Camardi and the New Beginnings Holiness Church family. Now, the family has selected a few cards to be read at this time. Promises of God's comfort and hope. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let it be afraid. May God's hope-filled promises bring comfort to your soul and peace to your heart. With heartfelt sympathy, Pastor Luo Campbell and True Vine holding his church family. Pray for you. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. May God give you strength when yours is gone. May his grace and mercy carry you on. May the unending love that he has for you revive your heart and see you through. Clarkton High School, class of 1977. In deep vicinity. May you find comfort in the memories that are yours to cherish always, and strength in the companionship of those who share your loss. From Minister Thompson and family. In sympathy. To Michael and family, happy moments.
Praise God. Difficult moments, seek God. Quiet moments, worship God. Prayerful moments, trust God. Every moment, thank God. Thinking of you and wishing you the peace that comes from knowing the memory of the one you love will shine forever. Sending my love and prayers to your family. Kelsey Mosby, Denise's cousin. Lord, we will have a solo by Reverend DeVore Lennon, followed by the eulogy by our very own prophetess Marilyn Williams. Praise the Lord. A woman that knows the word, a woman that will preach the word, and a woman of God that lives what she preaches and teaches. So after this solo, she will be the next voice that you will hear with our eulogy. Can we just give God a hand clap of praise tonight? Can we bless his name and just bless him? Hallelujah! For he is worthy, hallelujah! For not God that would not be us. Amen. We thank God for his glory and his somebody give God praise. Hallelujah!
That's what we're living for. To be with Jesus again. And what's happening on the inside of us is nothing but joy from Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to hold you too long. Hallelujah. I want to say to the family, be encouraged. God left you here for a reason. He took her home because it was time. No more suffering. No more crying. And if she was here today, I'm sure she would tell you, I don't want to be here. I want to go with Jesus. When you get to know who Jesus is. And how much he loves you. And all the stuff you done been through down here. And you don't want it no more. God will take you home. And that's what he did to Sister Denise. He took her home. Thank God for Brother Harry. He tap that song all over my message. Thank God for the sister that sung the song. Because see, Denise ain't crying no more. She ain't taking no more treatments. Her work is done down here. I didn't know her, but the smile on her face tells me a whole lot about her. She got the same smile my pastor got. And I know my pastor say she just want to sleep away. And I believe Denise just slept away. Oh, she, my, 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 my. See, I'm like my co-pastor. I don't believe that God left her here that time and gave her all that that she went through just to give it to her. I believe he had a talk with Denise. A lot of people don't get that opportunity. A lot of people go out of here right at that time. But I believe he left her here to have a talk with her because she had something in her heart for Jesus. She wanted to serve the Lord. She wanted to be with God. She was like the little man that was on the cross with Jesus. The last hour, God said, the last shall be first. Then he said, the first shall be last. The little man said, I was guilty of what I did and I deserved my punishment. But he looked at Jesus and said, when you enter into your paradise today, he said, remember me. He humbled himself. And I think he made it in the kingdom. Because God said he'll be with me in this day in paradise. See, so you got to look beyond the flesh. You can't look at the life that people live. Because you don't know where they're going when they leave here. And nobody ain't got no heaven. They ain't got no hell. To put nobody in. Hallelujah. Is this all right? Because some of us so righteous. Ain't going to make it to heaven. Because we got things in our life. That ain't supposed to be there. Hallelujah. Is this all right? So I'm not going to tell you today not to cry. Because you need a release. But when you cry. Remember. Jesus loves you. And there's no pain. No sorrow. No hurt that he can't heal. And he's there 24-7. All you got to do is call him. I won't be before you long. We're going to go in the book of Revelations on the day. We're going to talk about what we need to do before we leave this place. Revelations 1, beginning at the fifth verse. And it reads as follows. It says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. See, he died first. He died for you and I. And he had a fleshly body just like yours and mine. And he felt every pain when they stuck the nails in his hands and they put them in his feet. When they spit on him, when they beat him, he felt it just like you and I. So see, he was no different from the two of us. Hallelujah. Even though he was holy and divine, he took on the form of flesh and came down here and let us know, I know what you're going through. I feel your hurt. I feel your pain because I've been through it. His was more than ours could ever be. He said, and the prince of the kings of the earth are to him that loveth us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He went and shed his blood on the cross, took all those sins that we were going to commit before we even got here and put them on the cross so that we wouldn't have to live in sin. His blood, he said, and he made us kings and priests unto God and his father. 
To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He says, Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye. He didn't say some eyes. He said, Every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. Now we know they've been dead a long time ago, haven't they? But their eyes gonna see Jesus when he come in the clouds. So that means if you're dead, if you're alive, saved or unsaved, you're gonna see Jesus come in the clouds. But he said so. He says, And they also which pierced him and all kindred of the earth shall well because of him even so. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about whether or not we are preparing ourselves to see Jesus. Because we prepare daily for different things. We prepare to go on our job. We prepare to go to college. We make preparation all through the week to do something. But have we made any preparation to see Jesus? Have we made any preparation to go to heaven? Will we be ready when Jesus comes? Now, mind you, Sister Denise is gone. But the same train that came and picked her up is coming back again. And he's going to pick somebody else up. Sometimes he pick up a crew. Sometimes he pick up a slew of people. Sometimes he only come and get one or two. But rest assured that trip, that same train is coming back once again. If you want to be ready to see Jesus, there's some things that you got to do. This little book that we have in our houses, rarely get read. Do you know what that B-I-B-L-E stands for? It means basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what it means. So the next time you pick up this little thing in your house, don't let it collect dust because this is your life. And this little thing right here is going to determine whether you have eternal life or whether you have eternal damnation. We have two fathers. We have a father of truth and a father of lies. And we know who the father of lies is. We came here serving him. We came here knowing how to sin. We came here knowing how to tell lies, how to steal. We came here knowing the father of lies. But Jesus came that we might have a right to the tree of life. He came and shed his blood just for you and I. He said, if you take heed to your ways. He said, go in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. He said, my people that are called by my name. Name. Are you called by Jesus' name on the day? He called everybody to righteousness. But have you prepared to see Jesus, the creator of the world? Have you prepared yourself to make heaven your home? Are you decided that you don't need Jesus? You don't need to make a change. You don't need to do anything to yourself. But let me wake you up just a little bit. I was one of those people. But my God, as I kept living, and God start dealing with me in dreams and showing me things in the spirit. I found out that there's another home. There's another place. There's a heaven and there's a hell. Because hell is burning right now. I'm reminded of Lazarus. And how Lazarus was at the gate of the rich man. A poor beggar. All he wanted was the bread from the man's table. An old rich man had all that he needed. Didn't want to give Lazarus anything. But both of them had an appointment. And the appointment was death. And they couldn't cancel. <coughs> they couldn't cancel that appointment. They had to keep that appointment. The old rich man, he died. And the beggar, he died. But the rich man, he woke up in hell. They tell me hell is hot. They tell me hell is burning right now. Hush, he mama, 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 He woke up in hell. And when he looked up, you want to know who he saw? He saw the beggar, Lazarus, laying in the father, in his father's arms. Father Abraham. And Father, Lord, the rich man began to talk to Abraham. And I don't even believe that Lazarus heard the conversation because he was resting. See, when we leave here, we just sleep away when you're saved, sanctified. 
that and Holy Ghost feel you just sleep away you don't even know anything you don't have to worry about anything you're resting in Jesus and I believe oh Lazarus were resting in the bosom of Abraham and Abraham was talking to the old rich man the rich man say let Lazarus go and stick his finger in some water and cool my tongue he told him he said what kind of place this is and he told him he said if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets they ain't gonna listen to no dead man so I'm telling you today that I'm not dead I am alive I'm a vessel for the Lord and he sent me to tell you you don't have to go to hell but you can prepare yourself to make it to heaven you can prepare yourself to see Jesus in peace lose the kids was a short man but he heard about Jesus coming through the city and he said well I better prepare myself that I can get to see Jesus so he decided he'd run up a little tree a sycamore tree because he couldn't see over the tall people he wanted to see Jesus you got to make preparation if you want to see Jesus in the word of God in Revelation 6 and 14 it talks about the great men, the mighty men, the bond men, and the free men running to the mountains and running in the dens and telling the rocks to fall on them to hide their face from all that destruction that's coming from the wrath of God hide them from the face of the one that sits on the throne even in death you can't hide from Jesus because Jesus going to call you up and he's going to have you there on judgment day I don't care if you've been burned if you've been cremated he's going to call you and you're going to answer the call you don't have no other choice he's your creator he made you but you still got a choice to make. You can't go to heaven if you don't invite God in. He said in Revelations 3 and 20, he said, I stand at the door and I knock if any man hear my voice and open the door. He said, I'll come in and I'll suck with him. Have you opened the door every time you sit under somebody preaching the word of God to you? Jesus is knocking at your door and that's what's going to send you to hell if you don't answer the door. You can sit in there and stand there and not answer that door if you want to. Hell is your home. You're not making it to heaven because God done told you I'm knocking at your door. How many times do it take for God to knock at your door and you not answer the door? Some of us going to leave here and we won't have the chance that Sister Denise had. It'll be a sudden death. Some of us is going to go to sleep thinking that we all right and never wake up again. Jesus. Jesus. You got to prepare yourself to meet Jesus. We didn't just get holy, holier than now on our own. We didn't get what we have on our own. We realized that we needed to be saved one day. We heard the word of God and it convicted our hearts. And the word is true. Do you not know this Bible is a strong tower? Do you not know it has power in it? Has power to save your soul. Has power to take you to heaven. Has power to bring demons under subjection. It's got power in it. I'm not talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I know. I was just like a lot of us out there in the world doing what I wanted to do body was on fire hallelujah he let me know there was no way out of self for do through jesus christ hallelujah thank you jesus it's time to wake up people it's time to serve the lord time to submit to to god time to open the door somebody sung a song said open the windows heist up your windows open your doors and let jesus come on in when you're gonna let him in 
You can't wait until death comes, because when death comes, hallelujah, it's all over. It's all over. You're not going to be able to get in that way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The word tells us that Jesus told him, say, I won't come back until my word is preached all around the world. He's on his way back, people. He's on his way back. They said, well, what is the signs of you coming, Jesus? He said, famines in the land. We have famines in the land. He said, pestilence in the land. We have a pandemic in the land. Those are pestilence. He said, wars and rumors of wars. We got war going on over there in Ukraine and in Russia. and subject to come to the United States of America. Hallelujah. We got things going on in the world. So that should tell you that Jesus is on his way back. Don't get caught not prepared to see Jesus. I want to see him in peace. I know that some of you are not trying to go to hell. So if you don't want to go there, do what he said. He said in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, he said, humble yourself. That's the first thing he told us to do. He said, pray. We got to have a relationship with Jesus. He said, seek my face. Get in my word and see and know all about me. Hallelujah. Then he said the most important thing. He said to turn. Turn from your wicked way. He said, and then you will hear from me. He said, I will be your people. I will be your God and you should be my people. He said, and I will heal your land. He's not talking about this land down here. He's talking about your house that you live in. Sister Denise has left her house. She got another house she got to go to. There's no other house. Hallelujah. He said, he heal your land. He'll take away the sin. He'll forgive you for it. And he'll come in. And he'll sup with you. He said so. But you got to let him in. He's knocking at your door. When people are ministering the word of God to you. When you're walking along the street and they're giving you the word. When you're walking along the street and they're giving you something that God wanted them to give you. Or somebody prophesied to you. Oh Lord, he's knocking at your door. He's telling you right now. Come on in. That some of us will not be here next year this time. That some of us might not be here next week this time. But however, we got a chance right now to seek the Lord's face. To turn from our wicked ways and do what the Lord said do. We don't want to be like the world. We don't want to be lost and caught up in the world. If you're not willing to sell out. And get rid of that old life that you have. You can't have Jesus. Because Jesus said, I'm not going to live in there with Satan. I'm not going to live in there with all the sin that you got in your life. Uh, he said, I'm not going to do it because I don't have to. He said, I'm a jealous God. Then he told us, he said in, G, in 3, 3, John 3 and 3, he said, except you be born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. He said, if you don't be born of the water and of the spirit, you can't even enter into the kingdom of heaven. You got to do it God's way or don't do it at all. John picked it up. It's not John, but yeah, Peter picked it up and said, you must be born again. He said, except you be born. God said in his word, he said, Peter told him, say, repent, every one of you. Repent means to be godly sorrow for the sin that you're doing. Hallelujah. You got a problem with sin? If you don't do away with sin, sin will do away with you. You need to ask God to come in and take away your sin. Hallelujah. He's greater than any sin you have. He can deliver you. He can heal you. Hallelujah. Yes, he can. God is good. The Lord is good. Peter told him, say, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Jesus is so good. He won't let you go away from here without warning you. He give you due time. He give us all due time. We got due time to get right. And I'm still trying to get right. Hallelujah. I ain't made it to heaven yet. I got to still cross some T's and dot some I's. But I'm working on it. Hallelujah. Are you working on it? Have you put anything down? on it. 
you know, when you really want something huh, and you don't have the money to buy it, huh, you say, I'm going to take a little piece of money huh, and I'm going to put some money down on it huh, and I'm going to keep paying on it huh, until I get it out. Hallelujah. Huh. You got to put something down on it. Huh. You got to make a step towards the Lord huh, and you got to say in your heart, Lord, I want to serve you. Huh. What can I do, Jesus? Huh? And you got to work on it. Huh. See, my mama, my heart. I said, I got he, my mama, my mama, my heart. You got to work on it. He, my mama, my mama, my heart. People, 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 run, run, run. God say, run, run, run. You got to run for your life. He, my mama, my mama, my heart. Take heed, take heed to the warning. Ha, she, my mama, my mama, my heart. I'm coming back again. I said, I'm coming back again. There's another train coming. Huh? There's another train coming. Huh? And it's coming soon. Huh? Ho, she, my mama, my mama, my mama, my Death is in the city. Huh? Death is on the way. Ha, she, my mama, my mama, my mama, You got to go gird up your loins. Huh? Ho, she, my mama, my mama, my Keep praying to the Lord. Huh? Asking God to save you. Ha, she, my mama, my mama, Yes, he's taking the young. Huh? Just as much as the old. Huh? You don't have to be that old. Huh? Ha, she, my mama, my mama, my We got the deaf angel in the city. Huh? The shooting demons. Huh? Ha, she, my mama, my mama, my mama, ha. The stabbing demons. Huh? Ha, she, my mama, my mama, my mama, ha. You got the robbers. Huh? Ho, she, my mama, my mama, my ha. God said, I'm coming. Huh? Be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready. Huh? Take heed. Huh? Take heed to the warning. Huh? Jesus is soon to come. Huh? Ho, she, my mama, my mama, my mama, ha. I see ya, I see ya, I see ya. Ha? I hear your heart. Ha? I hear your heart. Ha? Your heart is convicting you. Ha? Your heart is convicting you. Ha? There's somebody in here, their heart is convicting them. Ha? Ho, she, my mama, my mama, my ha. ha? You got a choice right now. Ha? Think about it. Ha? There is a heaven and there is a hell. Ha, ha she, my mama, my mama, ha. ha? When you die and leave this place, ha? that is not the end. Ha? That's just the beginning. Because you got a new home. Ha? You got to go to. Ha? If you take any eternal damnation ha? or you take an eternal life ha? ho she ma 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 ha Jesus said take heed ha? take heed ha? I want you to take heed ha? I'm sending out a warning this evening ha? I want you to know I'm coming back ha? and I'm coming back real soon ha? real soon ha? sooner than you think ha? ho she ma 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 ha? ha I said the deaf angel ha? is riding through the city ha? and he won't stop ha? until God say stop ha ha she ma 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 ha we are all held accountable ha for the word that we have heard in here today ha ha she ma 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 ha you made preparation to be here today ha make preparation to see Jesus in peace ha make preparation to go to heaven ha ha she ma 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 ha let God pull down the strongholds in your life ha seek his face ha while he can while he can be found ha the blood of Jesus can deliver you. Ha, ha, she, ma, 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 ha, ha. I'm not trying to scare nobody. Ha, but God said it's a warning. Ha, there's somebody sitting in here today. Ha, that God said I'm coming for you. Ha, ha, she, ma, 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 ha, ha. And I'm coming real soon. Ha, Lord, have mercy. Ha, have mercy, Father. Ha, have mercy, Jesus. Ha, Lord, I ask you to have mercy, Father. Ha, give them a chance. Ha, to seek your face, my God. God, huh? Give them a chance huh? to repent. Huh? Give them a chance to come on in. Because huh? you said the last huh? shall be first, Father. Huh? Lord, work it out. Huh? Don't let them leave here huh? the way that they are, my God. Huh? Don't let them disregard your word. Huh? Huh? She, yeah, 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 yeah. Peace, peace, peace. God said, I give my people peace. I give my people peace. I give my people peace. Peace, peace, peace. I'm giving my people peace. My people are peaceful. Lord, I thank you, God, I praise you. Lord, I thank you, God, I praise you. I pray that the word of God has left a thought in your heart and in your mind. I pray that you have received what God has said and that you won't disregard it, but you will make some kind of preparation to see Jesus. Sister Finch, I believe, made that preparation. God gave her that opportunity. He didn't leave her that long for nothing. And I really believe that she made it right with God. 
because she said she loved Jesus. And all it takes is loving the Lord, just like the little man that was on the cross with Jesus. I believed he loved Jesus. He just didn't know how to do what he needed to do. And so there's so many that the Lord is going to allow that opportunity to make it right before they leave here. The life that they live doesn't matter. What matters is what they have in their heart for Jesus. Hoshi ma 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 ha. Yay, 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 yay. Peace, peace, peace. My people, my people, my people. Peace. Lord, I thank you. God, I praise you. Be blessed. Praise the Lord. Then our hearts burn. Praise God. Give another hand clap. Praise the Lord. I just want to make a little announcement before the marticians come forward. Uh, we have a repast for the family in the fellowship hall immediately after the service. Right now, it's the marticians who may come forth. Praise God, don't you think? Praise God. Let's give the Lord a highest praise. Praise God. Amen. We praise the Mount today. We thank God for everything that's been said and done. Let's give the woman of God a hand. Praise for the word of God. <clears throat> he said everything going to pass away except his word. And we praise God. We do honor the woman of God, the pastor of this house. Praise God. The pastor, Louis L. Campbell. Let's give her a hand. Praise for the woman of God. Amen. We thank God for our co-pastor. Praise God, uh, Barbara Cameron. Praise God. We praise God for everything. Everyone that praise God is in the respect, the place we do honor God and most of all. You know what he's in this house on today. We praise him on today. We thank God, you know, for the life of Miss Denise. And I met um, a Denise through uh, the cameras, uh, Pastor Cameron and, and uh, Evangelist Cameron, praise God. And she often would call me and we would talk. You know, I know what she was going through in her bodies, but, but she would always call me and talk to me. She was concerned about two of her brothers and we thank God for her, and she you know she always talked to me about them, and we praise God. We know we have two of our brothers here today. We thank God for her life, and just stay encouraged, Mr. Michael, but God, God said he won't leave you, not forsake you. Praise God. Denise left you, praise God, but God, he said he'll be there for you. When you want to call on Denise, call on God. He said he'll come to your rescue. We praise God for her family on today, her, her son and her cousin and the uncles and aunts, and to everyone, they respect the place in her life. Just, just look unto Jesus where you the author and the finish of your faith, and we praise God for you on today. We want to stand out today. We want to thank you for entrusting your loved one to Johnson Funeral Service, and hope I was serving and pleasing to you. If it was, tell others you're not know, tell us. And on today, we have a few uh, presentations we want to present, present on today from Johnson Funeral Service for just thanking you for entrusting uh, Miss Denise to Johnson Funeral Service to support your Miss Denise to say rest in peace and love remembers uh, Denise. Brown, Flint, Flint, uh, Nisi, is October the 5th, 1959, to May the 2nd, 2022, since there are Symphony Johnson Funeral Service Incorporated, Elizabeth Town, North Carolina. Again, we say thank y'all very much for entrusting Miss Denise Brown Flint to Johnson Funeral Service. May God continue to, continue to bless you. If you need me for anything, just feel free to give me a call. I'm here, I'm just a phone call away. It's like Miss Denise, she would pick up her phone and call me. We would talk, praise God. And I thank God. And the last time I think I saw, praise God, here, that I can remember when we had buried her aunt, Miss Cora. Praise God, we thank God for her life. And we praise God. We want to present the first portrait to her husband on the end there. We're going to present the, uh, the next portrait to uh Miss, okay, is Miss Gwen here? Okay, present to her for George. George is not here, her son. We're gonna do the next one to Miss Miss uh, Teresa. Okay, she have her uh, two brothers here on the, the two on the end here, two brothers.
and then we, we, we want to present one to our Pastor Kama. I heard this one said how she, you know, she had raised her part of her life, but we want to present one to her. I don't know if we can get up there. We can present. We're going to present another one to Miss, uh, I think her name is Gwen. Okay. Okay, we thank you. We do have a few more left. I talk with the ones that, that see they want one, but we thank God for you at this time. So at this time, we can get prepared to do the final view and then the, the best view of the church and give us time to get set up in the back. Okay. We'd like to have a few floor bearers, praise God. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our sister, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ who shall change the body of our low estate, that it may be fashioned unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. We're going to ask everyone to lead us in, to go in prayer. Repeat the Father's prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Back in the hands of the morticians. <laughs> 